You know, if there's one question I get asked more than any other, more even than why do they call it beauty sleep when you wake up looking like crap, that question would have to be Mark is a Nikon N2020 from 1986, as sharp as the name suggests, or is it just the photographic equivalent of acid wash jeans and hypercolor t-shirts? Well, today we're going to try and answer that question. Welcome to the 1980s. Does this ring any bells? In 2020, at least that's what it says on my copy. Most civilized parts of the world knew this as the Nikon F501, but the US had to be different. And in fact, there's something very cool about the 2020 vision nomenclature that matches the sharp lines of the camera and the era in which it was produced. Just as Zorki in Russian means sharp sighted, and reflected Soviet socialism throughout the space age. This is a camera for times where the future was so bright, we were all wearing sunglasses at night. To be fair, this camera came out in 1986, three years after Corey Hart and a full five years after both Duran Duran's Girls on Film and Jay Giles Band's Freeze Frame. 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 This was a time when it seemed every song began with the sound of a motorized film winder. And I have to say, I'm impressed that they managed to fix one of those things to a Graflex large format sheet film camera. But I digress. Internet forums, which are of course the 21st century Greek oracle and a natural evolution of scrolling on the walls of public toilets, they declared the Duran Duran Girls on Film intro to be a Nikon F3 with a motor drive. I'll take their word for it. And at less than two francs per second, we've not got that go-go's beat, but the Nikon N2020 is certainly a continuation of the F3 aesthetic. It keeps the sleek black exterior with red highlights. I mean, of course, the 1980s were all about black and red. Just think about Michael Jackson's Thriller or Knight Rider. And of course, as way back as 1978, Kraftwerk were way ahead of their time rocking the sugar-free Coke color palette. By 1986, we were entering the decadent half of the era. And this particular camera distinguishes itself by being polycarbonate. Yes, this camera is made of plastic rather than brass but it's pretty solid at 604 grams and nearly 40 years later, the plastic has stood the test of time, more than most 80s trends. It looks quite sophisticated now, I think anyway. I mean, it's not like you see many people these days doing their daily run in fluoro spandex, headbands and leg warmers. Just like we forgave Iron Man for that time he was caught speeding naked down Hollywood Boulevard, coked up to the eyeballs and throwing imaginary rats at police officers. Let's excuse some of the N2020's youthful design indiscretions. <laughs> Now for this walk, I paired it with a Nikon 28 to 105 millimeter lens. This isn't quite a contemporary, hitting the market in the late 1990s, but it does have a certain ostentatiousness with the color scheme, which while not quite a George Michael Christmas sweater does bring some more diverse color accents to the black plastic. It's a good match. Most importantly, by the time this lens came around, they'd started to work out how to make zoom lenses properly. And this manages to be fairly sharp throughout the zoom range and with manageable distortion and chromatic aberration. Now to really test this combination out, I should be at a high fashion photo shoot or coursing through Miami in my pastel suit on a speedboat. Sadly, my life is just not that glamorous. So I'm going to settle for a Sunday walk at my local beach. Done. 
far edge of the blue wool. Okay. Now, those of you who are particularly observant might have noticed that that wasn't 36 frames and you were right. When I got back home, I somehow managed to load the film onto the spiral in such a way that it just must have run through and outside, leaving me with a beautifully curled up roll of exposed film that, of course, I pulled out of the bag thinking, what the hell's that? Fortunately, I did have a second roll and we'll see the results in a minute, but suffice to say, it was me who let the camera down rather than the other way round. You might have noticed a bit of beeping as the camera struggled at times to manage the bright light with 400 speed film. That said, this camera is quite highly specced with a respectable 1 2000th of a second fast shutter speed. It has the usual modes of manual aperture priority and actually program modes. Regular program mode is I guess what it says on the box, but it also has a high program to favor fast shutter speeds and a dual mode that switches between the two depending on the film speed. You have exposure compensation if you want to tweak your settings for the conditions. What it does lack is shutter priority. If you set the shutter speed and put the aperture to f22, it doesn't know to change the aperture. For most people, aperture priority is preferred anyway, but there are times on the street or when I'm shooting my dog, I mean taking pictures of my dog, it would have been nice to have set a fast shutter and let the camera decide the rest. Leaving it on dual mode is the lazy option. And as I said, we were entering the decadent half of the 80s, so laziness is the order of the day. Because let's not forget, this was also Nikon's first autofocus SLR. To professional photographers, timing is everything. To capture the moment, they've got to focus and shoot in a split second, something most amateurs can't do. That's why there's the Nikon N2020, it focuses over 40 Nikon lenses automatically. I'm excluding the Nikon F3 AF, which is more of a bolted on afterthought rather than built by design. This was their first really serious autofocus camera. Was it elegant? No, it was sluggish and almost useless in low light. But Microsoft Windows 1 came out in 1985 and it wasn't that great either. It took them till 1992 before we were all playing Minesweeper at work instead of doing our corporate spreadsheets. Just as Windows was a shell on DOS, the N2020 is basically a manual focus with autofocus as a bonus. In fact, the N2000 or F301 that preceded it by a year is basically the same camera, just without that autofocus. Because of that, this one works fine with manual lenses. It doesn't come with a split focusing screen by default, but the LED focusing aid works brilliantly with arrows either side of the focus dot to let you know which direction to turn the focus ring. The viewfinder itself is nice and bright and has the information that you need in it to help you shoot accurately. As I said earlier, the first roll of film was a bust, not because of the camera, but because of me. This is actually remarkably idiot proof. It beeps to let you know when your exposure is out of range. And yes, you can turn that beep off, fortunately. And you get satisfying confirmation when you're in focus. You know your film is wound on because you get this neat little swirly indicator telling you. And while it lacks the auto rewind feature of later cameras, the rewind button and lock are a reassuring foundation for the standard knob twiddling rewind of earlier manual cameras.
pretty messy churned up sand and a lonely sunbather. Zooming out a little bit, focusing on the rock. I'm reliably informed that it's a thing that you write everything down on a plate, all of your life's trials and tribulations, and then you break the plate. Might be an interesting test of flair. We'll capture the curved ruts, tie ruts on the beach and shoot straight into the sun at the Indian Ocean Tea House. So what did you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. My favourites are probably some of the ones taken at the longer end of the zoom range and while you could argue that 105mm is still fairly short, it's a better range than the 35 to 70 millimeters that was actually the standard around that time. And my version of the 35 to 70 was a decent but not spectacular performer. See up here if you want a more detailed review of that particular optic. The 28 to 105 didn't let me down. It focused fine in bright light and it let me capture these photos from across the road. I didn't show them in the previous section, but I can't help but feel that this is what cameras and lenses like this are about. Capturing the world as it would have been seen in 1986. All the glitz, all the glamour, and now the decayed remnants about to be swept away by new developments. I'm not sure about what these buildings will be replaced with, whether it'll be a new Casa Mila, a Guggenheim, or just look like a wobbly concrete car park. Time will tell, and time has certainly told a story with this camera and lens combination. 
Not having the long telephoto allowed me some minimalist horizon shots. And while 400 speed HP5 was definitely overkill for a sunny Sunday morning, even in late autumn, it still gave enough resolution to show off the 28 to 105 millimeters as quite a good sharp general walkabout lens. If you squint and zoom close enough, you can clearly make out this poor person's miserable shattered life laid out in miserable shattered ceramic. Trust issues, poor communication, overthinking, I hear you. That's how I feel pretty much every time I think about uploading a YouTube video. And yes, I guess that's one message in life. Nothing is perfect. And just as the glitzy optimism of the 1980s left space for the insidious greed of corporate culture, the rise of the yuppie and the fallout of Thatcher and Reagan, this camera does have some flaws. First negative, the rewind knob. When I hold it in portrait mode, the lever scratches my nose when it turns. I mean, okay, it's a small thing and it doesn't it doesn't leave me cut up like Mickey Rourke after a bad fist fight, but like many things from the 1980s, it's vaguely irritating. In fact, this is one of the less ergonomic Nikons. While the grip is solid, it's not as comfortable as the more organic designs that followed it. And while I certainly enjoy the reassuring heft of the camera, it's not light. Noise, yes, the N2020 motor drive and autofocus are certainly not discreet. You'll see I had to keep a fairly respectable distance from my subject matter. This camera announces your presence like a sax solo on a Billy Joel song. Autofocus is not confident or accurate. It tries to samba with you and then just trips you up. It annoyingly sometimes settles just forwards or backwards from your selected focus point and you have to quickly readjust. The nice bright viewfinder makes up for that for the most part. And while it's easy to mock the clumsiness of primitive autofocus, I did find I was able to shoot my consistently camera shy dog using my 50 millimeter F1.8. Using up the last three frames of the roll, I got a better hit rate than I expected. And it does have some great features too. While primitive by today's standards, the fact that you do get single and continuous focus modes definitely brings it out of the entry level category. And you have the control of autofocus lock, auto exposure lock, and both manual and DX settings for ISO. You get a lot of control. It doesn't have a built-in flash, but its TTL metering works really well with this very cute and very cheap SB23 Speedlight. It takes four AAA batteries, and that means it's a good camera to travel with. You never have to worry if you run out of batteries because you can always just go to the convenience store and buy some more. And it has good build quality. Yes, nearly 40 years later, it's still here and it's still working. That's not to say that it doesn't have some weak points about the way that it's made. The flip side of using regular AAA batteries is the risk of them leaking. And the first thing I would check if I were to buy one would be the battery compartment for corrosion. Finally, the bestest, best aspect of this camera is its looks. No, don't laugh. I think its time has arrived. It has most of the cool features of the mid 1980s without some of the really ugly stuff. While not exactly the Cure or the Smiths, it's definitely more Michael Jackson than Millie Vanilli. Actually, maybe it is a bit like the Cure, at least early Cure, before Robert Smith started to look like your great auntie got caught in the rain on her way home from having her perm done. This has definitely held up better. Better than me, to be honest, I'm a realist. While I probably list as excellent plus plus on a Japanese eBay store, I know I'm somewhere between bargain and ugly on the KEH rating scale. Fortunately, I can deflect attention with my cool Nikon N2020 and moonwalk like no one is watching. Later. I'm getting too old for these games.